Welcome to the Know Before You Go Travel Show, where we share all the latest travel tips, tricks, and insights to make your next vacation the best one yet. So sit back, relax, grab a cocktail, and enjoy the show with Penyak Travel's George Penyak and our senior travel consultant, Janet Penyak. What is up, everybody? Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another edition of the Know Before You Go Travel Show, and we have a vacation for your earbuds today. Yes, we do. This one's a good one. It is a good one. Tilt your mic down. Your mic's a little too high. There we go. Now you're talking more to it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, we have an awesome show because we just got back from our cruise. It's well, the... not just, but like two weeks ago. Well, two weeks ago. feels like just. Yeah. And it's the new year. It is 2020. So I hope everyone's New Year's resolutions are going well. I wonder how many of them are already bailed. Yeah. What percentage of people like give up on the resolutions, you think, within like a few weeks? Uh, over 50%. You think over 50%? Oh, yeah. I got to look. I'm sure the, there's studies I on would, that. I would love to see the data on that. Yeah. We might look it up during the show because I'm just curious. But I hope <laughs> you're holding on to yours. And you know what's weird is like we kind of didn't really do resolutions. Maybe we did on the podcast talking about for the company. But personally, oh, yeah. I don't know. I'm just, I mean, I guess it's like a daily trying to work on yourself. Kind yeah. Of thing. It's like <laughs> if you commit to something just no matter what time of year it is, just do it all year, every year. Yeah. Or try to at least. Try to. But I like the New Year's because it's like that reset button. It's it is like reset, a reset, yeah. It's like an opportunity to kind of start fresh, I think, and people like that. I agree. So anyways, well, I hope you are holding on to your resolutions no matter what they are because we are in day eight. And, you know, a lot of people don't even start them until, like, day three. Yeah. Because, like, day one and two don't count. They're holidays. Oh, well, yeah. And then it's like... Well, then you know, I'll just weekend. start that Monday. <laughs> so then maybe they didn't start until the 5th. <laughs> exactly. But anyways, we have an awesome show because this one really will be a vacation for your earbuds because we are going to kind of take you on our journey over the next couple of episodes on our most recent cruise we went on. Yep. Did a three-night cruise out of Miami. Yes. On the Navigator of the Seas. Which is with Royal Caribbean. Royal Caribbean's Navigator of the Seas, which is a what class boat? You have Voyager the, class. Voyager class. And surprisingly, you know, tip historically at least, and you can speak to this, the shorter cruises typically have the smaller boats and the yes. less innovative boats. Not the case here. We no, did, I was genuinely shocked when we walked on board the ship. We did a three-night cruise on a, a, just a three-night cruise to the Bahamas, which is a very standard, right, Miami. very standard, like, you know, beginner cruise that you do. We were searching for a quick getaway. Searching for a quick getaway. And we saw this, we're like, yeah, let's just do this. I, honestly, we we're so busy during the holidays, we never even looked at the boat. Like, we just thought, we assumed it was probably one of their smaller boats, right? Well, yeah, because we've been on smaller cruises before, or shorter cruises um, that have been on smaller ships. For example, the very first cruise that we went on was actually the same exact itinerary just out of Port Canaveral, and it was on the... Monarch of the Seas. Monarch of the Seas, which, which doesn't even exist anymore. Doesn't, well, it exists, but not in Royal Caribbean's it's not portfolio. Yeah. Right. Um, so that ship was very small, you know, we loved it though. And then when we did our Cuba cruise about two and a half years ago, that was on the Empress of the, of the seas, which was also a very small ship. But I must say, I mean, this was awesome. Well, first off, let's talk about their new cruise terminal in Miami. Yes. The cruise terminal. So Royal Caribbean. So, um, They've been working on this new cruise terminal that gets you on and off the boat very quickly. Oh my gosh, we were on the ship, like by the time we arrived at the port, we were on the ship in like 10 minutes. It is awesome. It's, yeah. it's And we haven't gone out of Miami in on other cruises in a while. Like we haven't done like a carnival or a princess out of Miami in a while. No. But... So I don't. I can't speak to what their terminals are like, but I, we have done other cruises with other cruise lines everywhere, and this was by far the fastest and easiest. I literally think we just walked through, and we had no lines. Oh, no, and it was awesome because they had so many people standing there waiting, you know, on people arriving just to scan your phone, which is awesome. It's no paperwork required. Yeah, you know, you download the Royal Caribbean app on your phone, do the check-in from there, and then you just scan your boarding pass right there, then go through security, and then, bam, walk on board. And you're on board, and it's like my favorite, and we're going to release a video. I'm almost done with the video for the uh, cruise. We always do a video when we travel to kind of recap the trip and do the highlights. And well, not always. It's always on the docket, but 
you're, well, I you're missing a couple. <laughs> no, well, Punta Cana and Europe I'm still working on, but I'm yeah. actually further along on the cruise one. So I think I think this cruise one will be out soon. But what's what what like amazed me the most about this whole adventure that we went on on this little three night cruise is how innovative and awesome the boat was. It was a huge boat for a three night cruise. Oh yes, absolutely. So if you're looking for a quick three night getaway that's you know going to be somewhat cost effective, I would absolutely recommend this. This is this is by far like yeah. If you if you can if you're only looking at a three night cruise, not we'll have to like price it out like on your phone real quick while because I, I want to see what it compares to other cruises. Mm-hmm. Um, because that ship is. The value you're going to get on that boat and the enjoyment you're going to get on that boat is far exceeds any boat that you're going to get a three night cruise on. Oh, I, I would agree. In my yeah. opinion, I mean, there's not many three night ships, three night cruises that have ships like this. Right. They just don't. And I remember the first thing that hit me right when we walked on the boat. Like I'm always excited. Like oh, I can't wait to to explore to tour the boat. And one of the things that we do. We always do this on our, our very first day, and literally right when we get on, we like to grab a, a, a pool drink or like a, a tropical drink, and we go explore. Yes. We want to see every nook and cranny of the boat. We want to see every lounge. We want to see every pool. We just want to walk around the entire ship, the gym. We do it all. And I remember grabbing a drink at the, it was the first little lounge we saw. Right, I can't yeah. remember which one Which we was. did get the drink package, by the way. And we'll talk about the drink package, yeah. Um, and... It hit me instantly. I was like, whoa, this boat is com- completely different than what we thought. You keep calling it a boat. It's a ship. It's a ship. Well, I call them boats. It's because <laughs> that Lonely Island song, I'm on a boat. Oh, okay. I'm on a boat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a ship. But I was just blown away by how innovative it was. It was very big. You walk, right when you walk, um, at least the entry level, the entryway we used. We yeah, it was in, like level four or something. And you're almost right there in the uh, Royal Promenade which is the main section of the boat, and it was just... Which I didn't even know they had a Royal Promenade area, but they have that on a lot of their larger ships, and basically it's just a really cool area where they do like a lot of um, activities and evening entertainment, and a lot of things go on on the Royal Promenade. Yeah, it's like a very central area of the ship with very high ceilings. It's almost like a little downtown area, and you yeah. have like little restaurants and shops... Yeah, and they had lots of different bars, and it was just, it was very neat. They had a dry bar, which that's, you know, a place to go get your hair cut. I didn't even know what that was. When I was looking at it, it was like a dry bar. Yeah. And then you're like, yeah, that's where you get your hair cut. I've never heard of that. Yeah, and they had, you know, several different shops there. It was just, it was very neat. Very neat. Yeah, it was cool. And one of, uh, right when you walk in, so the actually the first thing I noticed right when we got on the boat was the Starbucks. Oh, yeah, and right. they had a Starbucks, which, I mean, that is just... You are a winner in my book if you have that. Yeah. Because I do love my Starbucks. They had a Seattle's Best Coffee, and then they also had a Starbucks. And we, even though we got the drink package, and with the drink package, you get free pretty much, or not free, you pay for it, but included alcohol beverages and also non-alcoholic. So if you wanted a coffee, you could get that. Not Starbucks, though. Not Starbucks. They had a Seattle's Best. Yeah, and that was considered the premium coffee. That was the, yeah. And so the Starbucks is something you had to pay extra for, which we didn't care. We prefer Starbucks, so. Yeah, and that, yeah, that's fine. And you could get free bottled water, which I love because we drink a ton of water. So that, to me, is was well worth it with the drink package. Yeah, and before we get into too much of the details of kind of the cruise, one thing that I, I didn't like about this cruise is other cruise lines, you could get packages of bottled water sent to your room. Well, yeah, that's that's a Royal Caribbean thing. But this one... That you can't. Oh, I thought you could. It was more expensive. Well, you can, but it's like, yeah, $80. It's outrageous. For, yeah. And, I mean, that's for the leader ones, but still, um, I think that that's kind of outrageous. But any ship that's owned by Carnival, and I know, I think Norwegian also has this too, um, a version of it anyway, but you can pre-order 12 packs of water for your room at a very reasonable price, like $5. So. Yeah, and I like that. Yeah. Like, I really like that. And, and and this this was not the case, and we would have done that, but because we'd like to have a lot of water just in the room. But in this instance, we kind of had to, before we go to bed, we would stop at a lounge. Hey, can we have like five or six bottles of water? Yeah. And they would just, because you have the drink package, you're going to get it. But it was just kind of inconvenient. But Yeah, that's okay though. But I'll say, before we get into the details of, the, of more details of the ship, let's just talk about the drink package. Okay. Um, and I'm almost tempted to just make this a separate episode because we could really debate this for a while. On this cruise, 
we paid how much did we pay for the drink package per person for me and you oh it was like 180 dollars, something like that i got it on special right after black friday for three nights yeah 180 per, person. per yeah so that comes out to it was like 360 or maybe it was like 190 something i, I don't i know it's bad i don't really no, remember it's 60, it's 60 bucks a day yeah it person. was roughly that yeah and that's with the discount right yeah that's not bad I don't think and that includes like the gratuities and everything on all the drinks. Yeah, so that that is, in in my opinion, if you can get it at that deal, that's not bad at all because that's just a few drinks on the boat. And think about you'll have wine with dinner and things like right. that. And that is by far worth it because you know I don't we don't drink many like fruity sugary drinks. But yep. when you're on the cruise, sometimes you want one. You'll grab like a margarita or something, mm-hmm. and it was good. Yep. But the, that that and pro- they had truly. Oh, they did have truly. Yeah, and that was included. That was awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I like truly. But um, but I think just overall, we'll, we might go into more details at, on like a left because we had an episode on that, right? Yeah, a long time ago. Yeah, one of our first ones. But I definitely on the shorter cruises, if you're going to you know have some drinks, I think it's worth it, and especially if you drink a lot of water too, because then you can just get unlimited bottled water. Yeah, and it just definitely changes the experience because you just don't have to worry about it. You kind of put your wallet away. Yeah, and, and you can use that drink package on Coco Cay. Yeah, so... So this itinerary, we didn't even say. So yeah, we just it? said Bahamas, but <laughs> it, it went to Nassau and Coco Cay Bahamas, which Coco Cay is Royal Caribbean's private island, and they have completely revitalized it and put a lot of money into it, and we'll have a separate episode on it. But you can utilize your drink package on the island, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, and it, so the itinerary was short and sweet. Um, I feel like we got a lot done in three three nights, essentially, and we, it didn't have a day at sea. No. That's not how it worked. But, um, but you know, yeah, Coco Cay recently renovated. Phenomenal island. Yeah. That was day two. Day one was, um, or I guess day, day three, really. Or Day one was Nassau, and um, we what we did is we went to Sandals. Yes. We got a day pass there. And just took a cab and, you know, we spent, we were, it, they spent a good time in Nassau, right? Yeah. It was there till like 8 p.m. Yeah, which is nice. Which mm-hmm. is nice. But let's talk about the boat. So go through the fact sheet with me real quick. Talk about, give me the, give me how big it is, the lounges, because we're going to focus on the boat on the show. Yes. So it's part of the Voyager class, which has, it was right at 3,800 passengers. So again, that just shows you how big it is for you know, a shorter cruise. Cause I think the very first ship that we went on that we said the Monarch of the Seas, it held like 2000 people or maybe even less than that, but less it was, than that. Yeah. I think yeah, it was 700 small. passengers. Oh yeah. 700, that small. 700 guests. Oh. Plus, I don't know. I can't remember how many employees. You might have to Google that. Um, no, no, I think I'm right on that. Okay. I'll, I'll <laughs> so at once it was one of the largest uh, ships in the world, I guess when it was introduced, which was 2002. So that's pretty cool. They just did a renovation on it. They had a dry dock about just over a year ago. And so that's what we were saying. You know, everything's very refreshed and new and it it was beautiful. Um, Lots of things to do on there. And while he's busy Googling away, I'm just going to ramble and you're not paying attention. No, you were right. (laughs) 2,700 passengers. Oh, wow. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I said 2,000. It was 2,700? Yeah, 2,700, which I'm shocked by. I can't believe... When I look well, back, I it's was a closer, smaller so. boat. Yeah, it was a lot smaller. It's a lot smaller than the boat we went on, but yeah, yeah. So, what do you think about how you know refreshed and new looking everything was? It was amazing. So, yeah, it was recently renovated in 2019, right? Early 2019, they renovated. Yeah, December the boat. 2018, early 2019. Yeah, and um, that boat was one of the most innovative we've been on. And considering the age of it, 2002, they did major renovations. It did not seem like it was. 18 years old not at all no not at all it's it's definitely it's like i was overly impressed and one of so we've been cruising for a long time and we remember not that long ago that you couldn't even it was really hard to find live tv on a cruise oh yeah other than in your room but even in your room sometimes you only get like two channels or three channels of like international cnn or something like that right on this cruise, they had a bar called the Playmakers Bar. Yeah, and it's a sports bar. That was my spot. Yeah, and they had the football games going, and everything was live. Everything's live. Crystal clear images coming through, and I'm sure that's been out for a while now. We just haven't been on a cruise ship that had had it as a focal point. They Playmakers is one of my favorite lounges there because there's football on. There's all sorts of live sports on that, that quite frankly, people want to 
see. Yes. And it was, I think it was like week 17 or something or week 16. I say that bar was packed. It was packed. And you could also order food there, but that food there is not included, but it yes. was very good. So you got some wings and I know I got. Like some potato bites or yeah, something we got, you like got that. wedges or something. And yeah, I, potato wedges. Yeah, and I had some wings, and it was just cool to just sit down and like you kind of feel like you're almost in like this really neat little sports bar that yeah. that would be in the states, and it was a big area, and they had all these different lounges that they had. Oh, and they had games in there that you could play too. Remember? Yeah, they had games like Connect Four and which Shuffleboard. George could not beat me in Connect Four. You, I didn't even know how to play it. <laughs> my tail. I don't. I you didn't even know how to play it. I I showed you how to play it. Yeah, and I'm like you know, and I'm competitive. Which I like, know that might sound stupid, but I, I don't think I've ever played Connect Four, and if I have, it, it's been a very, very long time. But I won, I think, every single game except for one. Every single game except for and one, and we played like ten. <laughs> and listen, I don't let my, I don't, I'm not the type of husband that just lets my wife win. No, I wanna, he gloats about. I want to dominate. Me. Yeah, <laughs> and <laughs> he's very competitive. I showed her how to win. And I showed her how to play, and I'm like, okay, she's never played before. I'm just gonna. You know, crush her for twenty straight games here while we just enjoy these drinks and watch sports. And you did not happen. You were killing me. Mm-hmm. My, either my game was off, or you're potentially one of the greatest Connect Four players <laughs> of all time. You have a natural. I'm strategic. Gift. I'm strategic. You are strategic. Yeah. And apparently, I'm a dunce because I could not win. Like you were whipping me within like the first like few. It's not like this thing's going all the way to the end. Like you're whipping me like less than halfway through the game. Yeah, he was just not good, but that's okay. Maybe it was just too many sports or some too many drinks at the sports pub. But, uh. <laughs> they also had Jenga in there, and so it was just a very neat place to hang out. Even if you, you know, maybe if your husband wants to watch the game and you're not interested, well, sit down and you know play a game, and then that'll entertain you for a little bit while um, the game's going on. Exactly, and I think what was really cool about having the games there is it made it more family friendly. Yeah. So like, even if like we're just two adults and we were playing some of the games, but there were also kids in there playing games while dad and mom watched. The sports and it kind of gave the family something to do yes and so that was playmakers that's like a their sports bar lounge whatever you want to call it restaurant but what was really cool is they had a couple other restaurants just in that in the promenade area and all of them when you walk in it you felt like you're in a completely different area yeah they all had their own theme so it's really cool well they had a, another, I think it was just one other restaurant there that served food that you could walk up and get like paninis or you know quick sandwiches or something. It was like, like a grab and go restaurant. Yeah, yeah. Um, pizza, but the so others yeah. were yeah pizza. The others were just bars. So like you could go into the bamboo room, yep, which was band. really cool. It had a like kind of like a Key West Miami feel to it. You yeah, know? like a tr- it had a like, very tropical. Like they wore the straw. Um, what do you call those fedoras? They wore fedoras. They also had the uh, the short sleeve button up tropical shirts on, which were yes. really cool. And that was which just George loves a good shirt like that. Oh, I love it. Yeah, and I I got another compliment on my flamingo shirt. Yeah, he wore his flamingo shirt on board the cruise. This flamingo <laughs> on the shirt first is day. fire. It I, is. I don't. It, Every time he wears it, he gets a compliment. It's just a white it. shirt, short sleeve button. I think up. you got it from TJ Maxx. Got it from TJ Maxx for like nine bucks, and yeah. it has this pink flamingos on it. And it's just got a pink flamingo pattern. Yeah. But there's something about this magical shirt. It's his vacation mode shirt. It it's is my day vacation. of when he's going on vacation. Like, I got to put my flamingos on. <laughs> oh, it's game time when that shirt hits my back. Yeah, it is game time. But um, but and, yeah. and they also had a pub. And then on the very last night, they had that really cool band that was playing out there. Um, in the promenade. In yeah, the promenade so area, yeah. It was kind of, I think that was, I can't remember what the party was called, but usually one night on the ship, they do like this mass. Well, that was, I think, the end of the cruise party. Yeah. Because it was on the last night. And man, that band was phenomenal. Yes. The band was so good. They were playing, you know, Tom Petty and just hits from like the 80s and 90s. Yeah. And it was just, it was great. Yeah, they were very, very good. And, um, but it was just the, the promenade is just like this hustle and bustle area. And there were some other ship. bars in there. I can't think of the, the names of them right now, but it was a few others and it was really cool. So I liked that area. And then I also liked going outside the lime and the coconut. And it was like a double decker bar that they had there and it looked and, over the pool and it looked over the pool and, and the big screen tv and they would have the games playing out there and it was very nice yeah so the boats nowadays a lot of these ships have these movie theater size screens almost that are near the pool area and they this 
this boat had the lounges that were on the opposite side of that, but you could just sit at the bar outside in open air. You're on the top deck of the boat, yeah, and you're just watching whatever. It might be a movie, and might they had NFL games on that day because I think it was week. That was on Sunday, yeah. It was they on had them, yeah. But a lot of times they'll play movies at night out there, and you can sit out there. Yeah, and enjoy movies, the movies under the stars. And and you know what? One of my favorite things to do on a cruise is just be on that top deck and look out and see nothing but water. I know. Yeah, it's beautiful. I'm sorry. There's something to that. There's something to just being on sea, and where you just can't see anything. No cell service. I think nothing. it's very relaxing. It's just extremely relaxing. It kind of it really makes you understand a little bit how big the oceans are. Like yeah. you really don't. Until you're out there in the middle of the ocean where you look around 360 degrees and don't see land, it really like, whoa, these, like, the world is big. Right. And it's just so peaceful out there, and you don't see any other ships on the horizon. It's just you. Yeah. And for some people, it freaks them out. Some people, they don't like being out that far. Right. Because, you know, they think if the boat sinks or something, God forbid, no one's going to find us, which isn't the case, really. I mean, the technology nowadays, I mean, it's nothing to worry about. But they had that lounge. Um, what was the name of that lounge? The lime and the coconut. Lime and the coconut. And then the last bar that we'll talk about, which is one of our favorites, uh, the Viking Crown Lounge. Yes, the Viking Crown Lounge. Which, which all the Royal Caribbean ships have a... I, I, yeah, because even the Allure that we went on had it too. They all have it, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's their signature. Every Royal Caribbean boat, you, you can see it. It's yeah. kind of a signature look for them. It's the circular 360, almost 360 view bar that's at the yep. very top back of the ship it's the highest point of the boat yes yeah and we like to go there and watch the ship sail away yes and that's exactly what we did so after we were done because usually you get on the boat a couple hours early I mean, they have the sail away party but i kind of just like to look from afar <laughs> yeah we don't do the sail away party so what we do is we like to Grab a grab a cocktail as soon as you get on, and just walk around and just. We like sound like explore. all we do is just drink on the screen. I know, but we don't. We're not like <laughs> we're not big drinkers, really. But what's funny is like, but that's what we like to do. And then um, we always by the so you usually have a couple hours by the time you get on the boat to the time you actually leave. Mm -hmm. Those couple hours we explore. We'll go see the casino. We'll go see where the restaurants are. We'll go see where the dining room is. And then usually we'll end up at the very top at the Viking yes. Crown Lounge, and then it's perfect timing because then the boat's sailing away. And well, why we do that is, for me, I like doing it because it's quiet. Yeah, it's quiet. It's, it's just chill. quiet, and you just literally, you're just slowly leaving the United States. You watch the United States just fade away fade <laughs> away off in the distance, and it's um, it's just a nice way to kick the cruise off. Yeah, so new thing that, I mean, I don't know how new this is, but it was new to us, is now they kind of split that in half, and they have half of that reserved, and it's completely walled off. You know, with an entrance, you have to swipe your key card to get in, but it's walled off for suite guests. Yes, yeah, so so that's nice that anyone in a suite, you know, you kind of have a private area to go back to. Yeah, and they still saved enough room of the Viking Crown Lounge to where it is still a lounge. But they, you're right, they had that separate area, which I thought was cool. I I, I wish I could have seen it. Maybe we could have told them we're travel agents and we just want to see it for our clients. That might have been. We probably should have tried that at least, but. It was neat that they had it walled off and separated. And oh, yeah. It was probably like a neat little area where they had probably little snacks and other drinks for sweet guests. Yeah. So. Now, on to the food. So, the food, I thought, was great. Yeah. So, on where do we ship. eat? Let's talk about where we ate. Because we ate at a specialty restaurant two nights. Two out of the three nights. Yeah. And they have several specialty restaurants on board. Yeah. Um, it is an upcharge. It's not included. Right. So, they do have a Johnny Rockets on board. That I mean, I know it's not super fancy, but they have Johnny Rockets on board, and they have the El Loco Grill, which I really liked. And those were just order what you want, and well, no, Johnny Rockets was an upcharge. Yeah, and so, then the El Loco, which is right across from that, these are both on the pool deck, so this yeah, is, people so, can like order them in their bathing suits and stuff. Right, if you've been on cruises before, usually those places right there on the pool deck, you know, serve pizza, and then they have also have a grill section where they serve burgers. Well, this one had all. Mexican food and make your own tacos. Yeah, and burritos. Mexican food is my favorite. So I eat it at least like several times a week. I yeah, always you, do. Eat you love Mexican it, food. Mexican or Tex Mex, some form of it. And they had this as their pool restaurant. And so I love that. Yeah, you could walk up, get your own burritos, you could make your own tacos. It was really nice. Oh, it was so nice. And I remember when we were doing our exploring on the right, the first day, yeah. we got on, we were exploring. We walked by it because we, we had made our way up to the pool deck. We're like, oh, 
tacos, perfect timing. Grabbed some tacos real yes. quick. Sat down. And they had we chips like, and salsa. And so nice. It was very nice. Yeah. And then, of course, they have, you know, the normal Windjammer Cafe. That's the buffet where you can get lots of different options for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yep. And that's, in- that's included. Yep. So. That's included. And so for dinner, though, for the specialty restaurants on board, they had Chops Grill, which we had the first night. Mm-hmm. And then they had a Hook Seafood, which we had the second night. And then they had uh, Jamie's Italian by Jamie Oliver. But we did not eat there. Mm-hmm. And they but, also had the Asian place. Oh yeah, and they had the sushi place. And that was up. That was on the. That Viking, was up by the Viking Crown Lounge. That was yeah. on the very top deck, which we did not have time to try because it's only three nights. You only have three dinners. I know, that's what with this ship. It, I mean, it's very cool, but yeah, there's so many options. You just simply can't do it all in three nights. I know that's the thing that got me about the boat is I love this ship. I love it. There's so much to do, but you can't do it all in three nights. No, you can't. But I would still rather have every option to, oh, yeah. than have a smaller ship. But, Absolutely. Um, so we did Chops the first night, which was excellent. It's our steakhouse at sea. Yes. And I think we've ate at a couple different steakhouses at sea. We had princesses a couple times. Mm-hmm. And this one was phenomenal. Oh, great. I mean, it was really good service. The up, well, How much did it cost? Uh, I think it was $87 for the two of us. Total. Total. Well worth it. Oh, yeah. Cause and when you when you go to these specialty dining restaurants on cruises, it's a flat fee per person to enjoy it. Yes, and you get unlimited whatever you want. Um, and you can also just side note, you can buy like a three night specialty dining package. Oh, really? How much are those? I can't remember off the top of my head. <laughs> we'll have to look that. We might put that in the show notes because yeah, I think it's one hundred and sixty nine dollars is what it would have been a person. And and you get three. Actually, that's probably not right. I can't quite remember what it is. Yeah, we'll put in the show notes because that that's cool. Because, I mean, the dining room is nice. Like, I did enjoy the dining The dining room food quality was great. Right. But these little specialty restaurants are good. They're just cool. You get a little bit different experience. You're definitely, like, in a more intimate setting. The dining room's huge. They had a three-story dining room on this boat. Yeah, which we did eat in the main dining room on the last night. And it was good. It, it was, was very good. It was fine. You our know, it was really our good server fun. was like, oh, it's so nice to finally see you guys on the last night. <laughs> yeah, because how it works if you haven't cruised before is that you, you can go at any night for dinner in the main dining room. And yep. they're very big. It's a ballroom style, three stories, um, essentially massive dining room. And there's three different dining options. You have early, late, or anytime. And so I had the early set up for us at 6 p.m. Yeah, because we like to eat early and usually have we a... We sound like old people. We don't go to <laughs> yeah. we don't go to the sail away party. We like quiet and <laughs> we like to not... We like to eat early. <laughs> yeah, we, we like things. Pe- and, we're, and our names are George and Janet. So people yeah. we go to restaurants so like George and Janet. They think we're like We're retired. basically 80 years old. <laughs> yeah, far from it. Um, all right. For those that haven't cruised before, you always have that. If you have time dining, you have that assigned seat specifically or assigned table in the main dining room. Yes. With your assigned server team every night yeah and so that's kind of cool because you get to know your server a little bit if you go consistently right three nights we did the specialty dining two nights and only went the last night and he's like hey where have you guys been but it's nice it's nice to have that because i think it's good for a lot of families i think it's easy oh absolutely and know. it's included so it's no extra charge and the food is great yeah the, the food, food is, is great. great and the quality food cruise food quality has gone up like 10x over the last 10 or 15 years yeah, I would agree with that. They've gotten so good because I remember our first few cruises, the food was good. Yeah, it was good. It was fine. Um, even the main dining room, it was fine. But now it's restaurant quality food. It really is. Yeah. Um, where do we eat the second night? I don't remember. Hooked seafood. You got that huge lobster. Oh my gosh, that's right. So they had a seafood themed restaurant. They brought out like literally a whole lobster. Poor uh, thing. Another specialty restaurant, so we had to pay <laughs> a little bit. But I don't eat seafood. But so <laughs> this we, thing, yeah. But I was still able to go and enjoy it because they also uh, offer a steak there. Yeah, they had a steak there, something for everybody. But I, I, I'm a big seafood eater, and they brought out this lobster, and it was massive. Yeah, it was huge. I mean, I, I looked at it like there's no way I'm going to finish this. Yeah, there's no way, and I didn't. I didn't come close. But it was delicious. Yeah, <laughs> it was really good. I mean. I would put that up there with any seafood restaurant in the States. I mean, it was that good quality seafood. And I mean, when you're docked in Miami and you're going to these Caribbean places, I don't know where they restock the ship at, 
but it's pretty safe to say they're. I would gonna imagine have, it's there. Yeah, it's going to have good seafood. Yeah, no, I mean overall, I think the whole you know dining experience on board was really good. Yeah, for three night cruise, the breakfast buffet had lots of options, and it was really nice. Yeah, we always did the buffet for breakfast. I mean, it's the best you're going to get for a three night cruise. Yeah, by like right now today, I'm pretty confident saying it's the best you're going to get on three night cruise. Yeah, and then a couple of things that we didn't do that they do have is they have a couple of different water slides on board, and they have. I'm losing my train of thought. Oh, the ice skating show. They have an ice skating show. Yeah. Putt but, putt. And they have putt putt. Laser tag. Laser tag. Tons of stuff for the family. Yeah. So there really is a lot on board to do. And it is in three days hard to do it all. It's hard to do it all in three Especially days. Especially when you're in port. But I think if you're like a family of four or five and you want like a quick trip that the kids are going to have a blast on, all perfect. Right. Slam dunk. Navigator of the seas. Three nights. Do the Bahamas Coco K. Because the kids can have, you could find something fun to do in Nassau, and then Coco K, the kids could go wild. Oh, absolutely. There was so much to do in Coco K. I don't want to steal thunder from a future show, which we'll do. Yeah. But Coco K had water parks and pools and beach activities. And I mean, you name it, it was there. It's like a, a, a paradise, zip lining. Yeah. I mean, any, everything short of a roller coaster was yeah. there. I mean, it was really freaking cool. And you and I just kind of hung out at the beach at Coco K. Yeah. Well, well, we'll talk about that. Okay, I know. On the next episode, but I mean, we're kind of, or a different one. <laughs> okay, recap well, we haven't show. even talked about our room, so you can get you know a wide variety of different room types on board the ship. You can get inside ocean view, ocean view balcony, and then of course they have several different suite options. So again, we were just looking for a quick, you know, budget friendly getaway, and so we just did an interior room. Yeah, we just grabbed, and it was actually pretty spacious. Yeah, and typically we like butlers, or not butler. Butlers. I'm, I'm thinking. My coffee hasn't kicked in yet this morning. No, not butler suite. Typically we like the Balconies. balcony. And But we have not gotten a balcony in the past several cruises. You know, we really haven't, and it's, it's kind of worked out because we don't spend that much time in the room. No. Um, but I do always enjoy having a private balcony, but oh God, with I this, love. I, I was just trying to, you know, be budget friendly yeah i love i love the balconies and and like if we're on a longer cruise i do want to get one that that's my first option yes on a shorter three-nighter eh, I, it's not for me it wasn't not that's not worth it it's just not one i'm gonna select yeah and you know also and i don't know this is not you know the the norm as far as weather goes but we didn't have the best weather on this cruise so i'm glad that we didn't get a balcony just because it was very windy so i think it would have been a little chilly to sit out there yeah and we thought about upgrading the balcony because you can always ask when you get on board mm -hmm. like right when you get on you can always go to the guest services guest services and and ask and we had talked about doing that we had talked about upgrading it but we said oh no it's fine we'll just stick with the interior yeah very spacious everything was updated because it was updated in 2019 um and it, just uh, sorry to interrupt you but just for kind of comparison purposes when we did that cruise to cuba on the empress of the seas and we also had an inside room there and that room was tiny like the bed came up to where the bathroom was yeah there was, there no, was not like, a couch or anything and this did have a little love seat that you could sit in there so it is very spacious yeah it had the love seat it almost felt like a, a tiny little suite because it had that little separate sitting area which we liked Mm -hmm. And I sat in it a couple times and just kind of watched TV while you got ready. Yeah. You know, like before dinner and stuff. So that was real nice. And again, I think that's part of the more renovated ships is you're going to get a generally bigger staterooms. Yeah. Which means a lot because these It really does because they're already small. These older ships, tiny, tiny staterooms. Yeah. And we had an interior stateroom in, at night, which is really cool. In the interior staterooms, everything's black. Yes. I did not venture outside in the middle of the night like I did on... <laughs> if on, you've listened to... Our other episodes, yeah. We, we have we, an interesting one. Yeah, where I, I woke up in the middle of the night to take a whiz, and I just, it's the middle of the night, I was groggy, and it was an interior room. And the room's so small, he just went to the, the first door that he could find, and... It was the door to the hallway. It was the door to hallway. the hallway, and he got locked out. I got locked out, and I was in my boxer briefs, and that was it. 
And I just literally, because I had to pee, and I, was, I thought it was the door. And no, he did not pee in the hallway. I did not pee in the he hallway. He ran and found a bathroom. Yeah, you'll have to go back. I don't want to share the whole story on this yeah. one. you have to go back, because I tell it way better on the older one. But yeah. long story short, I got in the middle of the night, had to whiz. It's pitch black in there, because it's an interior room. There's no light. Which, I, I, that is one thing I do like, because you sleep really good in there. Yeah, so. I know. I love it, because it's or so really dark. Well. And I just grabbed the door handle, which felt exactly like the door handle in the bathroom. And I just walked out there. I'm halfway awake, and the door shuts behind me. No room key. I don't have my pockets or anything. I'm, you know, nothing. And then I, I kind of come to, and I'm like, oh, crap. And the last thing you want to do is start beating on the door to try to wake you up. Because then yeah. your neighbors are going to wake up. I thought and, you just said you weren't going to go through this whole thing. Yeah, long story short, I, I had to interrupt. Like a, It was like 3 a.m., and I found like a employee, and they're like, what in the world? <laughs> yeah. So anyways, you'll have to listen to the prior. I don't know how to put that put that in the show notes as well which episode is that if you yeah. want to hear a story so one of the last things i want to talk about yep. is they have a nice adults only area on this is um the solarium yep that has the pool and it was super chill and they had a couple hot tubs in there and we hung it's out adults only yeah we hung out in the solarium night the not night the third day right yeah the coco k day after we left the island and then we went there yeah and it was very nice very quiet um it's mm-hmm. really good because it is adults only it's a good way for i fell asleep so yeah. it was very nice and relaxing yeah it was there. very nice and relaxing and they have camps for kids so if mom and dad want to get away if you're a family and mom and dad wants to get away mom and dad can go to the solarium adults only kids can play at the kids camps and i'd imagine on that boat we'd have to do some more research on it there's probably a ton of stuff to do at the kids camps for the kids oh yeah so. Absolutely. And then just to give you an idea on price, because you said we'd have to yeah. pull it up. So I just looked, and this is in May for a three night for two people. It's like $843 with wow. all the port taxes and everything. All in. Not the bucks. gratuities. So then that's going to run you another fourteen fifty per person per day. Um, but yeah, you would basically be all in for under $950, yes. which I think for what you get is pretty good value. Absolutely. And so in summary, I want to like touch on a couple no before we go travel tips. If you're looking at doing a cruise like this, a three night cruise, a couple things. If you're not from Florida, go in a night early, which we did. Yes. Yeah. We flew in a night early. We always recommend that because travel delays, the boat's not waiting. Right. You miss a flight, a flight gets canceled, bad weather, anything can happen. You want to schedule yourself to get down there at least a day early, which we do. Mm -hmm. And then also too, we like to prepay the gratuities. We've always done that. Um, the ships give great service, and then at the end, they you you're if you don't prepay them, you have an option to add gratuities to your staff. And that, well, they will automatically <clears throat> add them to your account on board if you if you let them, right? Or do you have? It's mandatory. I mean, it's automatically done now. Technically, you can go have them removed. Oh, okay. But well, it is automatically done. But we always prepay them. I the like to prepay them. Just get it out of the way because it's one less thing I have to worry about. My on my bill at the end of the ship or at the end of the cruise. Yeah, and and honestly, they do deserve it because everything from every, and they work very long hours. They work very long hours, and every lounge we went to, and everyone we interacted with, even the our uh, the guy that ha- cleaned our stateroom. Oh yeah, he was awesome. Very I nice. Mean, everyone was pleasant. Royal Crib and Royal Crib, and we always get a great experience. Yes, and um, it you know, it just was they earned it. It was, it was great. Yeah, no, absolutely. I would say. My only negative would be the bed wasn't as comfortable as in the past. Yeah, that 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 is the bed. That's a very good point. The bed wasn't as comfortable as what we had in the past. It had it wasn't the worst. We've had oh, way no, worse. Oh no, it was fine. But but you're it just right. wasn't as comfortable. It wasn't like the I'm trying to princess has had some really good beds where yeah. I sleep like a baby. Um, yeah, the bed was the bed was. I would give it a six out of ten, seven out of ten for for a cruise. Yeah, I guess so. So. But it was still great. 100% worth it. So. Yes. Anyways, well, that's a wrap. We've been rambling for 38 minutes. I thought it, we were going for a while. I hadn't given you the finger yet. Yeah, you haven't given me the, hey. Well, let's Shut go. it up. <laughs> Shut it up. <laughs> well, you haven't rambled too bad on this one. Yeah. So anyways, we love you guys. Thank you guys for listening. If you made it this far, please like and subscribe the show. Um, and if you can give us a review, please give us a review. Some platforms do not allow reviews, apparently. Um, but if you're on Apple or Google, I believe they do. So go ahead and click five stars. We love it and appreciate it. And by the way, thank you so much for all the love lately. We've been getting a lot of messages on Facebook and Instagram and uh, a lot of quote requests come to the website. Thank you so much. You're, yes. You're keeping Janet very busy and she loves you guys. Yes. So anyways, we will talk to you guys soon and that's the show. Bye everyone.